Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman, here, as always, with Tom Orr. Tom, how's it going? Tony, you don't need to pause so long. We now have more football stuff to talk about, so we gotta, we gotta, you don't need to, you don't need to pad the shows out by pausing for seven seconds before you say, how's it going? We have actual football stuff to talk about. It's very exciting. Let's, let's get going on football stuff. That's great for me because I don't really care how you're doing. Tom, let's get to the show. Uh, we we wrapped yesterday's show and, and we still have plenty to discuss from when uh, Ryan Day, Kevin Wilson, and Jim Knowles talked to uh, reporters at the WAC on Tuesday following practice number one for the Buckeyes. Practice number two will get underway Thursday morning. They will then take a week off for spring break because college kids got to be college kids. Then they'll come back, and that's when things will really start to ramp up. Ryan Day called the first week kind of an OTA thing. Uh, I believe uh, op, is it organized training activity is how the uh, NFL. Organized team activities. Team activity, yes. So that is what kind of what they're doing right now. No pads or anything like that um, just yet, but those will come. So, uh, Tom, let's continue where we were by starting a new topic. How would you like that? <laughs> Uh, I want to talk about Jim Knowles and his thoughts on the safeties. We teased it. You teased it uh, on on Tuesday's show. And so right right now, Josh Proctor isn't able to go. And so there's some questions about what he will be able to do. Uh, Right now, that leaves guys like Ronnie Hickman, Bryson Shaw, Court Williams. I I, I was glad that somebody asked about Court Williams. Because I, we, you know, is he linebacker? Is he safety? What is the plan? Because you have these hybrid things that you like to do. And right now he is at strong safety, the boundary safety, what Jim Knowles calls the bandit. So Court Williams, Tom, has gone from bullet to bandit, which sounds very Old West. Like, uh, you know, it, it, that that could be like a Louis M- Lamore book from bullet to bandit i bet wouldn't be surprised if it is uh and so that's where he is now ronnie hickman that's ronnie hickman's position however without josh proctor there maybe right now it's without josh proctor at the free safety or the middle safety or the adjuster as uh jim knowles calls it maybe that is ronnie hickman right now and 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 Tom, when Jim Knowles was asked, "Hey, uh, you know, would you like to play these guys together?" Yes, basically was his reaction. It, it does seem like he's kind of looking for best available, which is, I mean, kind of their philosophy in a lot of different places. You know, wide receivers, uh, offensive line. It's like find the best five offensive linemen, and then you slot them in wherever they slot in. They're looking for, you know, he talked about the linebackers kind of having. You know, those are interchangeable positions, more or less, which is kind of what they've had in the past. That's more or less what Ohio State's discussed in the past. That those are similar, uh, similar roles. Safety spots are a little different. I mean, you got more run responsibilities in some spots than others. But yeah, I mean, if if those are the best guys, you get the sense he might just he might just play those guys, and he really likes both of those guys. This is something we were talking about. And he sort of talked around at the end of yesterday's show, so we didn't steal too much from today's show. He loves Court Williams, man. He loves Court Williams. He he sees a lot of uh, potential in Court Williams. He Court Williams is someone that Ohio State coaches have loved since like the day he walked on campus. Like that, he was someone who just immediately was talked about as like a future captain. They they love everything he brings, but he's more playing behind Ronnie Hickman if he's if they are both at that uh, that bandit spot. So that's going to be a uh, you know how how are they going to sort how are they going to sort that out. Because if, you know, how much does Josh, Josh Proctor figures in this conversation as well? And then when does Josh Proctor come back? So this is going to be a really interesting thing to sort of watch them try and sort out through the course of the uh, the course of the spring. Because Ronnie Hickman, I mean, of all the things that were not wrong with the Ohio State defense last year, Ronnie Hickman was right at the top of the list of things that was, were not wrong with the Ohio State defense last year. He was the leading tackler, just made a ton of plays, really didn't have a lot of, uh, of you know, bad a, a lot of bad plays just just very consistently around the ball making plays doing everything they needed him to do so i'm sure he's going to be someone who they want to play as much as possible this spring but if they want to you know having having two safeties in that same spot 
that can only be, you know, that can only be a positive for this team. More, more good players in the back end of this defense has not, uh, that has, that has not typically been the problem the last few years. So if that's the problem this spring, that's not a bad problem for them to have. Yeah. The problem that you want to have for sure. It's interesting to me that he has really only been around court Williams now off the field, seeing him in the halls of the wax, seeing going over with him, film, uh, film with him, uh, seeing him in the weight room. But he said Court Williams is a leader. Like He has been able to see this on his own from their own interactions, and he's not even seen him on the field yet. So I think that's interesting when a guy is a leader on the field, off the field, and, and coaches, it's readily apparent to them. And I'm sure, obviously, people told him, hey, they, this guy is a leader. But it's one of those things that seems like it would have stood out to him anyway. And it's one of those things where he... You didn't need to tell me. I, I could see that. The Ronnie Hickman thing is, uh, he called Ronnie Hickman a heads-up guy. Basically, he uh, said, he's everything I want in a safety. I de- <laughs> his quote, exact quote, I definitely want him on the field, and I want Court on the field, too. And so that leaves questions about Josh Proctor. That leaves questions about Bryson Shaw. I know some people may be saying, well, you know, wh- what about Tanner McAllister? Can somebody play in the slot? No, I... I that doesn't sound like that's going to be in the cards for either of those guys, especially with as much as as uh, Jim Knowles loves Tanner McAllister. He mentioned that uh, very proud of of Tanner because this is a guy who you know came to Ohio State from Oklahoma State, and he has just continued to work. Got special recognition from uh, Mickey Marotti on Monday for the work work that he had put in, and I bet that made that that has to make Knowles feel good and he said it did that where you've got this guy who has followed you and he's kind of got uh, your stamp on him and then when he shows up and isn't here just because well like he's not just a tag along he's he has performed well enough he has done the work he hasn't doesn't act like he's owed anything you know he's come in and put it put the work in and, and impressed Mickey Marotti and and got recognition for that, so that that was good to see as well. Uh, but yeah, they they do have more safeties, and some safeties are out. But I, um, you know, that that's going to be inter- interesting to see what happens when Josh Proctor is healthy. And there's a possibility, I guess, that he could be uh, maybe full go by the end. It sure seems like they're just going to work him back. And if it happens, it happens. Probably no reason to push him, but uh, you know. It it is beneficial to have more than you need, but uh, I mean, it's it's just gonna. I don't I don't know how it's gonna shake out, but it's gonna be fun to watch. It should be fun to watch, and and having a little bit of uncertainty back there is. I mean, from our perspective, it's that's a lot of fun. Then mm-hmm. you know, g- going in like nothing nothing sells newspapers like a uh, quarterback battle. Well, there's no quarterback battle this year, but uh, you know, in terms of like interesting stuff to talk about, position battles, guys switching positions, like that that adds a lot of intrigue and i mean makes it more fun for us to watch this spring too so yeah that that's going to be really interesting mcallister is an interesting person on this team because you know Knowles talked about how proud he was about you know how he like you mentioned the getting getting an award for mickey Marotti, and you know it seems like he's really assuming a leadership role on the team pretty early this season that that they're calling that that nickel that they're calling it the nickel you have in the past heard it called as the slot corner or the uh, the cover safety. They're just Knowles called it the nickel on Tuesday. So that if you will, you will probably hear us using those terms somewhat interchangeably because we're we're uh, still not you know we're we're still not out of the old uh, the L, the old talking about Ohio State defense uh, mode yet. But he's someone who, from an on field field perspective, seems like he is probably at least right now the the leading contender to be in that nickel spot probably Cam Martinez behind him which is sort of what we were expecting coming into the spring he's someone who there's some off there's a lot of off field benefit to having him there as well cuz Knowles talked about the fact that you know yeah you, you hear about him talking you know sort of serving as a translator for some of the players in terms of like explaining some of the concepts cuz he obviously played under Knowles at Oklahoma State before playing for Knowles now at Ohio State so he knows the Knowles defense pretty well but he, he, you know, Knowles also said, like, he also can kind of help explain to guys, like, don't worry about, like, basically, don't worry when Jim Knowles is yelling at you. Because, like, sometimes Jim Knowles has a, you know, is a day where he's happy. And sometimes there's a day where people aren't doing what they need to and he's yelling at you. That doesn't mean he wants you to transfer. Like, he just, 
Sometimes he, you know, sometimes he yells. That does not mean that does not mean anything terrible for you. Don't worry. It's okay. Like just sort of like, you know, don't, don't worry. My dog, my dog will bark, but don't worry. He's not going to bite you. Like kind of, kind of filling that role uh, a little bit on the team as well, which is, you know, that's one of those like soft factor concerns that you don't necessarily think about with a new coach. But, you know, if you're used to Kerry Combs being very positive and supportive with you and, and now Jim Knowles is not necessarily always going to be that way, like just, yeah, it's nothing personal. That's what, you know, when he does this, this is what this means after uh, years of experience with him. It's okay. He still loves you. Like th- th- that feels like that's one of those things that you probably don't think about being something that matters, but kind of is something that might, might matter kind of behind the scenes. Yeah. Especially as they implement a new defense with new personalities. One of the uh, other interesting things that was talked about was practicing tackling to the ground in the spring. And the question I think was like, how do you do that? How do you practice tackling to the ground? And his answer was, we don't, you don't practice it. And they used to, but it, uh, he said that uh, he had a friend in, in football and he uh, what, donated his brain to science for CTE study. And he saw this fo- obviously a football player and he saw the, the effects of CTE on the brain. And like from there, he's like, I, you know, he was all aboard limiting contact and practice so that that doesn't happen to players or whatever. So he was, he was demonstrating the, the technique, uh, owning the hip. He was demonstrating that with the microphone in front of him. It's like, you got to have your hip right here. And you, you, it's about being in position and it's about fundamentals. And you can practice that without ever tackling. You can do that in any drill. Just it's about positioning. It's about angles. And it's about you know, having help as well. And if you miss a tackle, it's okay because basically you've, you've done everything they've asked and there should be somebody else there as well to help. And, and it's, it's just interesting to me where he used stuff that he has experienced in his life and, and seen that to realize, okay, time to change with, with the times. And Ohio State went to the rugby tackling back in 2014 when Chris Ash came in. So this is nothing new. And he he's all about the... He's fine with the the rugby tackling as well. It's just uh, no more putting your face in there and and uh, just keeping your head up and really just about angles and position and getting to a spot. And if if you miss the tackle, you miss the tackle. But you've done everything else that they've asked you to do. That was such an interesting conversation because he talked about it and you know opened the opened that answer with you know Woody Hayes used to talk about you know tackling with your head across the bow and mm-hmm. like you don't do that anymore and. I, I wonder if that is going to lead to fewer targeting penalties for Ohio State if they're really changing, if, you know, if, if that represents a real change in philosophy for, you know, or emphasis in how you tackle and proper tackling technique. Because one, one of the things that he said was, if, you know, a guy gets past you, they're not, ne- you know, if you're in the right spot and you're taking the right approach and you're taking the right angle and all that kind of stuff and you, you miss tackle, you miss tackle and they're, they're not going to like get on you for that. If you ta- if you're in the wrong angle, you take the wrong approach then they will get on you about it. So, you know, if you can be, you know, to the rugby, to the point of the rugby, rugby style tackling, if you take the right approach and you come up and you, you, you know, you come with the angle and you attack the hip, like they talked about and, or own, own the hip, I think is what he said. And you wrap him as, you know, as that guy's shifting to move away from you, he's turning in a way that is going to make you, you know, open him up to be rugby style tackled more efficiently. So as he's trying to avoid you, he's actually making it easier for you to tackle him and get him to the ground. So it's, you know, I think it's a maybe a little bit of a variation on what we've seen from Ohio State in the past few years. But, you know, I, we'll see. Uh, they have they have really not done a lot of tackling to the ground in practice over the last few years, at least when we've been watching. It feels like that that has not happened a ton. And it sounds like it's maybe going to happen a little bit less. I, I'm going to be very interested to see how does that impact the uh, you know, the tackling on Saturdays in the fall when they are tackling to the ground or at least trying to, because, you know, I'm sure the first time that uh, anyone misses a tackle, there's going to be all sorts of screaming and yelling on Twitter about how, well, the, if you're not, ta- if you're not teaching tackling during practices and you're not tackling everyone to the ground, well, of course you're going to miss tackles, Well, like everyone's going to miss tackles, but it'll be interesting to see what, you know, what do the, what do the missed tackle numbers look like this year? Because if you can teach it correctly and do it without, you know, with fewer hits and fewer, I mean, this is like a big conversation in the sport right now is fewer exposures is one of the, one of the key buzzwords right now. If you can teach it correctly and do it with fewer exposures, 
and, you know, sort of save the hits on the brain, those kind of multiple smaller hits on the head, like, great, that if you can make safe football a little bit safer without really compromising the on-field product, like, yes, this is should, something that we should all be rooting for, because that may keep football around, as opposed to, uh, if it continues to be an issue, you know, that, that that's how you turn into uh, boxing. Yeah, yeah. Uh... Thank you for that depressing note, Tom. <laughs> Much appreciated. But also probably realize that tackling will get better as the season goes on mm-hmm. as well. Uh, I think you'll see that. Um, the differences for Jim Knowles at, of being at Ohio State compared to where he has been before, I thought was an interesting topic as well. Uh, he was asked, you know, are, are things different for you now? And he said it's different because it's the Ohio State, you know. And yes, everybody knows. He said the expectations are obviously different. The resources, however, are they make those expectations realistic, basically. He said, I basically have everything I ever wanted or any coach could ever want. Now, when that is the case, then uh, yes, those expectations are going to be ramped up. But also, it has to be just freeing to have that stuff at your disposal. And it's something that Brian Day instead of Gene Smith. Anytime he needs something, you, you ask for it. And if it, if you're asking for something within reason, you're going to get it. And you look at what Jim Knowles has. He basically brings all of his, I don't want to say underlings from Oklahoma State, but the, the GAs and, and analysts and like that, uh, guys like that, they come over. Ryan Day basically said that, well, he has his, like, Knowles has his own army of people on the defensive side. His day was asked, hey, day was asked, were you curious about how the defense went today? And did you look over there at all? And he just mentioned the army, the little army of people that Knowles has. So Knowles has the talent, has the resources. Like, he's not going to get any feedback or not, not any um, resistance from Day in terms of, what he wants to do because they brought him over to do what Jim Knowles does. And there's nothing that he could want for because can we get this machine? Yeah. We'll, we'll have it we'll overnight it. Can we get this? Yes. We, we actually have four in storage. And, and so you got all of, we've never used it before, but they have all of these uh, things that they, they can do for him. And now he finally, uh, it's almost the, uh, the full strength Jim Knowles that we may get to see this year. That's the really exciting part of this is you've never seen him with this type of players, this type of resource, and he's achieved really, really remarkable results without having all that stuff. So now what is that going to look like with all of that kind of stuff? That's that's where the ceiling for this program could be really, really high. If you know, if you've had to do this with one arm tied behind your back for years and all of a sudden that second arm is free, like, well, that's uh that that's a real opportunity to to uh be even better than very good. And uh, if the defense is even better than very good and the offense is what it's been in previous years, like, well, there, uh, you know, you may want to keep your early January free because that uh, there may be, there may be some football games of note uh, in the uh, first week or two of January for this Ohio state team. If, if it all goes like that, that the flip side of course is he's never coached in a place with the kind of pressures that you're going to face at Ohio state. That's, you know, that's the downside that comes with, you know, you have everything you want. You have all the resources you could possibly reasonably ask for. So if the results don't don't follow, well, that's a problem. And the the leash is probably a little shorter, and the ex, you know the bar is a lot higher than it has been in a lot of the other places he's coached before. So you know there's no real reason to think he won't be successful. But that's you know that'll be a little you know that'll be interesting to see how does that you know if things don't go well, how do you adjust? Because he, he talked about as a teacher, be, you know, him as a teacher was a big topic of conversation on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And he said, as a teacher, if the players aren't doing what you're, they're supposed to be doing on Saturday, that's not on the players. That's on him for not having taught them correctly, because his job is to have them, you know, schooled up, ready to go, knowing what they need to do going into that game. And if they don't, that's not on them. That's on him. The idea of Jim Knowles having coached his entire career with one arm tied behind his back and what can he do now with both arms, Tom, in reality, his arm would have atrophied. So it would be of no use basically (laughs) for him now. He just had all, he just had all of January and February with coach Mick. I'm sure he's got his arm back in shape now. True, true, true. Perfect. Uh, So yeah, that's, 
that will be it's just interesting to see as he gets to play with all of these wonderful toys basically as uh, a great man once said uh, that great man was an evil villain named the joker <laughs> so through this spring jim Knowles wants to put all of these guys in as many different positions as he can so that he can understand what they can do and what they can't do talking about the linebackers basically said there's really very little difference between the will and the mic and there's there's no mention of Sam in any of this. Just talking about the two linebackers, the Will and the Mike. It's very simple, Tom. They need to be able to run and tackle. They need to be able to uh, stop the run and defend the pass. They have to be able to cover. They have to be able to run. They have to be able to spill all of that stuff and spill and fill and tackle and this and that. And and then I, when he's talking about how they have to be able to cover as well, I start to think about how does that affect the middle linebackers is Tommy Eichenberg, that kind of guy is Cody Simon Moore, that type of guy. And how is that going to shake out? And and we'll see how that goes. I don't know that there will, I'll be kind of surprised if there's a definitive uh, delineation of one and two between those two by the end of spring. Um, but I, it, it's going to be interesting to see as one of those guys is better than the other. and how they um, start to separate themselves. But Knowles does also say like, and, and if there's one guy who can do something and, or if his guys really can't do all the things he needs to do, he has to scheme up the defense to fit what they can do. And so if they have a uh, uh, two middle linebackers that can run, but can't necessarily cover, you have to, you've got five defensive backs on the field. Maybe, maybe, maybe cover with something there, but uh, it's going to be, uh, a constant adjustment of learning what these guys can do, assuming they can handle what you give them as as you install the defense, and then finding out whether or not you are right or wrong in uh, it's like week one against Notre Dame. It's going to be so interesting to see when they really feel like they have a handle on that kind of stuff because you're you're doing a bunch of install this spring, so everyone's kind of learning and sort of getting up to speed this spring. How quickly will he feel like they have a handle on that stuff? Because you're asking people to do a lot of, you know, pretty athletic things. So, you know, this is not necessarily, as he was saying that today, I was like, I don't know if tough Borland would be getting a ton of reps in this defense. Like that's not, that's kind of the older style linebacker role. And, you know, they have, Ohio state has had some highly ranked linebackers uh, in recent classes. Like this class, there was one who went to, went to Alabama who was kind of more that traditional mm -hmm. Ohio state middle linebacker. Who they didn't, I mean, they basically passed on him because he didn't fit what they were looking for as a linebacker moving forward. That that's a pretty significant change. So you you wonder, Paula E and what what is his role? Does he have a role as a linebacker on this team? He was, I mean, he was apparently working at mid punt gunner at one point during during practice on Tuesday. So, like, what what is his role? Is he someone who maybe you know follows Cade Stover and Mitchell Melton and maybe works with the defensive line at some point. Is that, is that where he fits? Like what, where does he go? Does this, you know, if you're really looking for athleticism and quickness and change of direction and all that kind of stuff, does this end up as a steel chambers and chip train them linebacker combination ultimately? Cause those you, just because they're both working at the same spot right now does not necessarily mean they can't be working at different spots in August. Mm -hmm there's a lot of stuff that, that we'll have to kind of see, um, you know, where does Taraja Mitchell fit? Does Taraja Mitchell fit what they want to do in space? Maybe, maybe not. There's, there's just, and, and we have, I feel like we haven't really seen Cody Simon healthy yet. Cody Simon was going, which Cody Simon, that leads me to believe Cody Simon is, you know, he was not on the uh, unavailable list. So he's obviously good to go. So I'll be interested to see what Cody Simon looks like this spring. If he is, uh, you know, if, if it is finally a healthy Cody Simon, what does he look like in terms of, you know, being able to do the stuff? Because he he seems like he should be able to do some of the stuff they're looking for him to do. Now, let's see, you know, let's see if he can actually do it, you know, when the when the bullets are flying for real. And what was that chip train him transfer in a cry for help, so to speak, for the Ohio State defense in terms of we need linebackers that could run because. That can run east west. Mm -hmm. We've got north south. We meet, we need more east west. And uh, is that where that um, you know, he helped solve some of that problems? Because he did say that train him. You know, the slate is clean on everybody. So whatever he sees from this point on is going to be fact. 
last year, you know, what whatever. I mean, film from last year has given him a starting point for this year, but what it, what happens in practice is obviously going to be what matters. Time we also talked to uh we heard from Kevin Wilson. Um I thought it was interesting. Kevin Wilson was asked, Hey, what's this defense like? And he said that there's a lot of movement, which can confuse the quarterback, but they're not unorganized because they they stay gap sound defensively. So it's basically uh I don't want to say the opposite of the 2020 defense where uh there was no movement and they were not gap sound. But <laughs> if the if the shoe uh, fits so they they do give various looks you don't necessarily know what you're getting from one from one to the other and it's still early but this is from his his study and and, and, and the walkthroughs and things like that uh where um you're realizing okay so this is this is pretty unique this is pretty good and so it sounded like kevin wilson was was impressed just by what little he has seen so far that was a classic kevin wilson answer because the question sort of started in one place and then he kind of meandered around a bunch of other really interesting thoughts and then got back to, you know, where the where the where the uh, question sort of started. He he talked about, you know, I mean, having to go back and like watch Oklahoma State film to figure out, like, what are we going to face in practice? Like, he didn't know. I mean, that's and that's one of those things you don't really think about. It's like, well, they have to sort of prep for what they're going to see in practice, too, because otherwise they're just going to get blown up all the time. So it, that that was kind of an interesting start to that answer. And then, you know, going through uh all the different stuff that they have to account for because you know the question was i think maybe a little bit framed around wh- how do you you know how do you do you scheme up certain looks for what you're going to get from the defense you know during practice like okay well we know if we come out in this formation they're going to give us this and he said well first of all you have to everything you do has to be you have to know how to like block everything so it's like okay if we come out in this formation we have to be able to block it if they go with a four down front or a bare front or if they're going to, you know, because you, when you're facing a defense that's unpredictable as this, as this Jim Knowles defense is, you can get thrown a lot of different looks. You have to be prepared to block all that stuff and, and, you know, protect CJ Stroud and all that stuff and open running lanes and all that stuff. So they, it was this like really long involved answer, but yeah, I mean, that, that was my takeaway as well was, you know, they are, it is, I think this is going to be a, a defense that is going to do CJ Stroud a lot of good to be facing during practice where you, you, you are getting, they are going to be confusing you. You're going to be showing you all sorts of stuff you haven't seen before. And then if you, you know, see that stuff in March, see that stuff in April, see that stuff in August. So that when September rolls around, then if Notre Dame tries to confuse you a lot of times, Oh, I've seen that. And I know, okay, our adjustment is this. And you know, that it sounds like they're going to be putting maybe a little bit more on CJ Stroud's plate in terms of protections and all that kind of stuff. Get all that stuff figured out now. I think having Jim Knowles as a defensive coordinator at Ohio State is going to make CJ Stroud a much better quarterback this fall. Yeah, and Wilson said essentially the same thing. The offense will be ben- be- will benefit from it. Uh, it. Knowles said that they want to match the Ohio State offense. Basically, like, the Ohio State offense is one of the best in the nation. We need to match it now. To me, I'm thinking, well, if the offense is scoring like 42 points a game and the defense matches it, that's 84 nothing a week. <laughs> that you can win on that, Tom. You can even give up. That's why he's not worried about missed, t- missed tackles because you're scoring 84 yeah. points. It's like, yeah, give up 14. Yeah, sure. What the problem? Who cares? And cover cover a 70-point spread. Absolutely. No, Tom. Do not talk about gambling. <laughs> wrong, wrong week for that. Sorry. Yes, yes. Thank you, Tom. Uh, so Kevin Wilson also uh, was asked, like, what are you trying to get out of this spring? What's the focus? And to, uh, to I think, the ears of many happy Buckeyes, he said he wants a tougher offense. And that's been kind of the focus this spring. And that's running tougher, uh, pad level, just all of that sort of thing that goes along with it. So they'll be watching that. And really, if you have that this season, if you're able to pick up the tough yards and he said, now we're not just going to be like a a loaded backfield or anything, but when you can pick up those tough yards, then everything else that this offense can already do, because they have, he's like, we've got a pretty good guy at quarterback. When you have that passing game and then you can pick up tough yards when you need to, which they couldn't always do last year. Now you're, I don't want to say you're unstoppable, but you're well on your way to like 45, 48, 49 points a game on, on the season and then controlling the clock, and that's going to help your defense as well. So 
it, it's it's amazing how much just being able to that third and two, you pick that up that helps your defense. That obviously helps the offense. It 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 can be the difference between a seven point win and a seventeen point win. Just simple things like that where games that would be close uh, don't have to be because you are able to pick up those tough yards. So leadership, toughness seems like the focus, uh, even though it's more leadership than toughness overall uh, as a focus for, for the winter and the spring. I think offensively, more than defensively, the toughness is, is going to be important and they're focused on that. If you go back to last year's team, you know you look at the Nebraska game, you look at the Penn State game, the difference, the reasons those games were in, in, in doubt in the fourth quarter in any way was that they kept kicking field goals in the, in the red zone because they kept bogging down in the red zone. If they can figure out that short yardage, you know, they, you know, as Justin Fry said back in January, we want to be able to run on third and two when everyone in the stadium knows we're going to run, we're going to run on third and two. We want to still be able to do it. The other piece of that is that ended up being the answer to a couple of different people. I think Kevin Wilson and Ryan Day both got asked about. You know, how do you keep people from doubling Jackson Smith and Jigba? Like the secret is out. Jackson Smith Mm -hmm. and Jigba is a good wide receiver. How do you keep people from just like taking him away, just doubling him and just trying to take him away from you? And the answer was, well, you, you gotta be able, if you can run the ball, if you can, if you can, uh, you know, if they're doubling Jackson Smith and Jigba, that means they do not have a plus one in the box and plus one in the run game. So that means you should be able to run the ball real well because you should be able to block all the, you know, there, there is no, no free hitter then if they have, are throwing two people on Jackson Smith and Jigba. There's not going to be a free hitter in the run game. So then you got to be able to take advantage of that. And if you can take advantage of that, well, then they have to take someone back off of Jackson Smith and Jigba and ta-da, you've solved the problem. That that seems like something that is going to be a pretty big, you know, the ability to run the football. I don't know that they're going to, you know, they're not probably, you know, making their making their money uh, running the football this year. That's probably not the where they're going to gain most of their yards this season. But the ability to run the football the ability to open things up in that run game, that's going to end up being a really big part of how successful that pass game is this year. Yeah, I'm thinking national championship as well. A couple of other tidbits that uh, just stood out, and, and you can add in any that you have as well. Ja'Kalen Johnson and Jordan Hancock, the second-year cornerbacks. Ja'Kalen Johnson, redshirt freshman, Jordan Hancock, sophomore cornerback, mentioned by Ryan Day as having a great offseason mentioned by Jim Knowles as a standing out as well and basically having very, very bright futures. So I thought it was interesting that those two guys um, stood out in terms of, hey, who's standing out? Coaches tell you. And then Donovan Jackson, I think he's probably your starting right guard at this point. Kevin Wilson could not say enough good things about him. He's rare athleticism. He does stuff that offensive linemen aren't supposed to do. It, he was asked if uh, you know if Paris Johnson is a left tackle. How's he doing? And basically, fine was the answer. But he mentioned like if, if Paris Johnson can't do it, you know they they can they can try uh, Zemhalski. They can try Donovan Jackson, and that gives you an idea. We've mentioned Donovan Jackson as a possibility at right tackle or wherever as as a future tackle because he's guard size. He's like six four. He's not six six. But you look at his feet, you look at his, his athleticism, he can definitely play tackle. And I thought it was interesting that uh, Kevin Wilson even mentioned him as a, a possible left tackle. And that's not this year, although uh, if something happens, perhaps it would be. But something to keep in mind down down the road. But certainly a rare talent who, with Harry Miller out, seems like your top five, your five offensive line is, uh, I don't want to say set in stone, but pretty pretty well set in stone, especially with Josh Fryer out as well, who may have been one of those guys that could, com- could have competed for one of those open guard spots. Those are two for sure of the people who you would have expected to be in that top seven, top eight conversation, Fryer and Harry Miller. So without them, it means your top five is probably, you know, if you if you give me a top five of Paris Johnson, Matt Jones, uh, Luke Whipler, Donovan Jackson, Dewan Jones, I feel like I've got a pretty good chance of having those be the, the starting five offensive linemen. And I think that's probably the order left to right. You're probably going to see them. But yeah, Donovan Jackson in the conversation is potentially a tackle. That's really intriguing because they obviously love his athleticism. He he came in last summer. He wasn't even in last spring. He came in last summer. We've talked a million times about how difficult it is to get on the field right away as an offensive lineman. And game one against Minnesota, they were, I was in the, uh, in the kind of tunnel on the way up to the media workroom. And they were, 
there were a couple of Ohio State staffers talking about, you know, hey, we got to get a, you know, get another jersey for, uh, you know, get another jersey for him. And I'm trying to figure, who are they talking about? Because they needed an, an alternate number jersey because you, you couldn't have multiple guys with the same number on the field at the same time. And it was Dewan, uh, or you needed a, a, a eligible number, a eligible uh, receiver number was the issue. And I'm like, who are they talking about? And it was Donovan Jackson because they had Donovan Jackson as a tight end in the jumbo package like day one at the Minnesota game last year. And so that's something where they're not going to do that, as Kevin Wilson said, like, you're not going to do that if this guy can only do one thing. Like, you've got to be able to trust this guy to do a bunch of different stuff. He could do a bunch of different stuff very early. He was someone who they they saw a tremendous amount of uh, ability in and a tremendous amount of potential in. He's someone who they very obviously really, really want to get on the field. I would I would be very, very surprised if Donovan Jackson was healthy and not one of the starting five this fall at this point. Yeah, Wilson even said if it had been last year where he needed to play, where Donovan Jackson needed to play, he wouldn't have changed any of his play calling or any of his suge- suggestions to Ryan Day. He had that kind of confidence in him, and he thought he would have played very well if the if the need would have been there. So, Tom, I think that wraps it up, at least for the stuff I've written down. Did you want to contribute to the show in any way by saying anything else? I, I don't think we want to get away from our winning formula, so no, I think I think we're done. <laughs> Thank you for that uh, compliment that I know you meant. Uh, so that will do it. Uh, an interesting day of hearing from the coaches, getting some answers to some questions, getting some new questions to ask down the road. Uh, Very interesting all around. So thank you guys for tuning in as always. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Reminder, five-star reviews wherever you are. Those always help. Helps other people find the show, especially now that there's more to actually talk about. So that will do it for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, Thursday, running backs and wide receivers sounds like, so we should have something there for you as well. Thanks, and we'll talk to you later.